الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم. All praise and thanks are due to Allah. Friends, I'm going to cut to the chase. I've got 20 minutes. So, a lot of praise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send our peace and blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this evening something more than a nice talk. I mean, really right off the bat, I was in the same boat as Mufti Yaseen. I was very lost on the concept of the title. I was very lost on this concept of loving the haters and brushing the shoulders off. And I can only imagine what the uncles were thinking as they read this, but that's okay. Alhamdulillah. So what I'd like to do is make this section as interactive as possible because I don't need to say much after uh, Mulana's talk. It was to the point and can someone quickly summarize in one nutshell. The talk is about uh, dealing with bullies. Can someone summarize? Just give me a quick summary. I got 20 minutes. Don't waste my time. Sisters. Nutshell, the whole talk basically said what? How, how to deal with criticism. And who dealt with criticism the best? Prophet ﷺ, the lady carrying his groceries, then the people. A guy tried to stab him. Okay, that I thought was pretty zany. But then, a guy, if you meet a guy who does magic on you, A, ask him how he did the magic. Because that's pretty interesting. I don't know how to do magic. And B, you, you take that guy to town, right? If someone looks at us disrespectfully, if someone mentions our hijabs don't match our socks, right? We talked about this last time. Then we get all like, you know, it gets on like Donkey Kong. So in this case, in a nutshell, the, uh, Mulana gave us the talk that forgiveness was in the character of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How do you deal with a bully? Surah Bani, we, we read this in several occasions. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And when the jahil, ignorant person says, Oh, Bin Laden's cousin, or says something retarded, then you look at him and say, قَالُوا سَلَامًا Now, that is all fine and dandy, but now we want to get into how can we take that to our applicable lives. And I don't know how many people are going to leave me out to dry on this, but I'd like to see a group of people raise their hands. If you could, I was sitting back there listening to Sheikh saying, and raise your hand if you were with me. Well, that was the Prophet ﷺ, and I ain't no Prophet. How many people were with me? How many people were like, well, that's not, my, right, Bilal? My whole thing was, that was his character. That's why he was a Prophet. You know, you, you get the point? So what I want to do is I want you to help me construct my talk. And this is going to be the most important. Let's try to find other awliya or other anbiya, in this case prophets, in the Qur'an that were bullied. And then let's see who was bullied the most. So if you don't mind, we have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now why was he bullied? What was his main, what was the main message? Main message of Islam, friends. One God, bada bing, there you go. One God, there's only one God, all the idols that you guys, the American idols and all of the other idols that you worship, they're all not real. And the only real thing is one God. And by the way, I just happen to be the last prophet of Allah. Fair enough. Could you bully that? Yeah, I guess you could. You could bully that. But at the end of the day, he had Quran. So it's kind of hard to really bully that. What did they do? They persecuted him. They physically attacked him. And I want to make it clear. I'm not discussing bullying when someone physically attacks you. If someone calls you, you look like a mummy or a ninja or whatever, that's bullying. I want to start my talk out by very clearly saying, if someone physically abuses you, friends, they lay a hand on you or they interact with you in an uncomfortable way, you're going to make that clear to your closest adult. I don't like the way that that teacher patted me on the back. Someone touched me. Someone got physically made contact. That's not what I'm talking about. If that happens, you're going to contact someone and you're going to let them know what happened. So let's go on. Can you give me another prophet that you think was bullied? Quickly. Yusuf, okay. Yusuf alayhi salam, very good. Yusuf alayhi salam was jailed because of a scandal. So at the end of the day, he could be proved right or he could have been proved wrong. So the people who bullied him, there was a 50-50 chance, right? He, they got into the scandal, remember? And he said, Qala ma'adha Allah. He said, no, no, I ain't about this. I ain't about this scandal. I'm not going to be on the front page of, you know, the uh, Inquirer magazine, Yusuf alayhi salam. Did he do this? Did he not? I'm not going to be there. Give me another prophet, sisters. Another prophet who was bullied. Pardon? 
Ibrahim I was waiting for someone to say this. Quite frankly though, Ibrahim salam, he did some bullying of his own himself, right? He walked up into that temple, he was like, look at this bad boy. So he was not the, the weak and oppressed. He told Rasulullah in Jannah, he goes, the best time on earth. This is smack talk. He told Rasulullah he said, the best time on earth was when? What did he say the best time on earth was? Sitting in the fire. Okay, so he, I wouldn't really say that he was the most uh, bullied. They tried to, but they failed. Someone else come up with a prophet who was bullied, and if we could really go there, he was bullied for a purpose. He was bullied with some meaning. Can anyone figure out who that prophet was? Who was it? Lut alayhi I'm going to go ahead with Lut alayhi salam. But his people weren't bullies. They were not bullies. Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam was not bullied by nobody. Let's get that straight. Musa alayhi salam stood his ground. When someone got out of order, what happened? That was it. That was it. You don't mess around Musa alayhi salam. I'm serious. What person can have a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then be able to stand in front of Fir'aun and say, I know what's going on. So we had Lut alayhi salam, his people, not the best bullies in the world. We had... Isa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam wasn't actually bullied. They bullied the wrong guy, right? No, but this is good. Now you're giving me. So we have a whole bunch of prophets who were bullied, but they weren't really bullied. One, Isa alayhi salam, what, did he die on a cross? Wala taqulu thalatha, there is no three Isa alayhi salams either. Who was bullied and it almost made sense? Like if we were there and we weren't Muslim, we might bully him too. Bang! I like you. Stand up. What did you say? Nuh alayhi salam. Now, I want you to put yourself there. According to some narrations, good look, according to some narrations, one of the earlier prophets, now we're early prophets, people don't know a lot about one God or God or no God. Now here comes Nuh alayhi salam. And where did he live? It doesn't have to be geographical. Did he live in the middle of an ocean? Or was it really? It was really dry. And what was my Prophet doing? What was, the, what was he doing? He was building a boat in the middle of the desert, friends. That's a reason to pick on someone. Now the reason why Brother Abdurrahman gave me this session is very clear. Because I was the picked on guy. And the next talk is going to be by Shaykh Abdul Nasser, who is going to speak about bullies. I was picked on, so I'm talking about being picked on. And Mulan Abdul Nasser is going to be talking about bullies. That's all I have to say. So, now, we are in Surah Qamar, Surah 54. There are a lot of ayahs here, and I just want you to experience two. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paints a very vivid picture for us. Nuh alayhi salam is calling his people for how long? How many years is he giving da'wah? Right? Everyone credits us. How many? He, for nine years? For 95 years, 950 years. And how complicated was the religion then? How many, t some narrations say they had to pray. Most people say they didn't even have to pray. There was belief in one God. And how preposterous is that? Hey guys, there's a sun in the sky and a moon. The one who put it there is one God. He, Nuh salam, comes to a people and goes, Look guys, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he, to give you the message, Fear, be conscious, aware of Allah and, and obey me. Uh, I'm not asking you to do much. I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you for a reward. Quite frankly, Nuh salam didn't want to be the president or the king. He just said, Now, if you have a reason to bully someone, I want you to put the talk in two parts. There are reasons to be bullied, like you're a dork, that, hey, I was a dorky kid. And then there are reasons to not be bullied. Just like someone comes over and says, look, you have a beard. That's, that doesn't make, that's not a reason to bother me, right? So put that on the shelf. Reason to be bullied or someone just made up something, you know, not so intelligent. So Nuh alayhi salam is giving this message, Islam, Islam, Islam. And now I want you to do the same thing. You are giving a message, the way you dress, the way you wear hijab, the way we pray, you know when we pray in the gallery mall and people stop and take pictures, we're giving a message. And it's really weird, because you're praying next to, 
you know, banana republic or something. So to the people, it looks like you're building an ark in the middle of the desert. And is there a reason to make fun of us? Was there a reason to make fun of a guy building a boat, alayhi salatu salam, building a boat in the middle of the desert? Yes. Like if you, if you see someone wrapped up like a mummy in an age where you're supposed to be uh, large and in charge, flaunted if you got it, in that age, I got plenty of reason to make fun of you. Put that on the shelf. Now, Nuh alayhi salam is building a boat. People have the reason and what is he warning them um, of, by the way? Can you help me out here? He's warning them of a flood. He's warning them, now put yourself in the shoes. He's warning them of, if you don't pray, you could go to hell. Same thing, both. If you chat online too much, you're going to fall into some, you know, chatting, poking relationship. This is the same thing, friends. The same thing. And people are like, no, everyone chats online. Everyone builds a boat. No, dude, nobody builds a boat. What's wrong with you? Boat in the desert, do you get it? And upon this, the people of Nuh salam openly, openly rejected him. And in ayah number 9, surah number 54, surah Qamar. I need you to know this because I can't cover all the ayahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوح And the people of Nuh, they rejected him. كَذَّبَتْ There's a very important word coming up here. فَكَذَّبُوا so they rejected him, they denied him. They were like, what boat, man? You're making a raggedy boat and there's no water here. What is this? Allah, Allah, Allah. If there really is a flood, then bring it on. عَبْدَنَا and What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refer to Nuh alayhi salam? The bullied. What is he calling him? The prophet? What is he saying? فَكَذَّبُوا Friends, uh, in Arabic, how do you say slave? Dream students, put the pronoun we at the end of that. What is it? Ab. Wow, it's okay, never mind. I'll just talk to myself for a little while. So, Wissam, there's a word called Abdana, our slaves. Excellent. The people rejected, said, What kind of retarded ship are you building in the middle of the desert? Oh, yeah, a big god in the sky. Let's see the water. Bring it on. And they then went on. Now, watch the bullying goes. Look at your retarded ship. Now take that off. Is there something to make fun of? Yes, there is. But then they take another thing off the shelf and they go, Majnoon. Man, you're crazy. You're wildin'. You are crazy. And then I want you to listen to the word, Wazdujir. Zajara. The root word of this is Zajara. It occurs in a, a, a conjugated form about six times in the Quran. This word can be translated as they bullied him. They mocked him, rebuked him. They didn't just say, you're crazy. They said, stupid ship. They mocked him. They got in his face and they did agitating things to him. Zajara, look it up. It has many, many meanings. So in this, somebody who was following what he believed, stood up and did what he was supposed to do. And the people made fun of him. They called him or her a, a mummy. They look down on the people. They mock them because they had, they look like Splinter from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They mock them, they said things about them. And what is that first thing that the guy did? And I'm not gonna end, this is the only point of my talk tonight. What did he do? Now, take it off the shelf. He could have said, but I'm a prophet. This thing that you're making fun of, it's real. He could have given them rational proofs, emotional proofs. Friends. When they made fun of him in ayah 9, where did he go in ayah number 10? فَدَعَى رَبَّهُ He turned to Allah. فَدَعَى رَبَّهُ And he made dua. Okay, great. So your whole talk is when someone bullies me, I should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to. Now listen to the words. Tell sleep. Friends, this is the real goal of my talk and I'm going to credit it to my family member. My brother-in-law gave me this whole little segment here. When someone bullied him, where did he turn? To Allah. Friends, I'm not turn, telling you when someone calls you a mummy to turn around and start making dua. I'm asking you when someone looks down on you, 
get your credibility, get your acceptance, get your pat on the back from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does it click? When someone comes to you and says, you look dumb, and who are you to make this judgment on how I look? When someone comes to you and says, man, why do you wear such loose clothes? Skinny jeans, brother, skinny jeans. Why don't we look back at the person bullying us and, and just take a second and be like, and who gave you a license to tell me what I need? No one did. Alas, would not the Creator know better? Would not the Creator license and say, you look beautiful. This way that you're covered, it looks wonderful. This way that you don't make eye contact all the time, it's wonderful. Because we live in a time where they tell us how to dress, how to act, how to feel. And if we don't look and act and sing and wear a rubber band around our wrist, we're not accepted. So friends, this is not my talk at all. It's a wonderful point. And when my brother-in-law said, why do we turn to them to validate us? I lost it for a second. I was like, dude, forget my talk. I'm going to talk about this. I will end on one thing now. I want you to take both things off the shelf. Both things. And I talked about this a little bit and some people caught it in California. Remember the guy who gets made fun of because there is something dorky about him? I want you to think about a guy who only eats organic. Uh, a family who only drinks organic milk and they eat those cage-free eggs, right? What do we do to the average person who drives a Prius, drinks uh, whole, you know, raw milk, organic milk and organic eggs? What do we do to them, everybody? You know, think he's, he's like a dork. Call him a tree hugger. Well, you don't, alhamdulillah. Usually, someone comes to my fridge, they're like, oh my God, he drinks organic milk. Now, you have to pause here. Step away from the camera for a second. In reality, and let's just say, Molana Nasser knows someone who makes fun of people who drink organic milk. You should advise that brother, Molana Nasser. You need, you need to follow the story here. Now, the guy who drinks organic, is he doing the right thing or the wrong thing? He's doing the right thing, right? He's doing a healthy thing for his body. He's helping himself. The guy who's making fun of him, watch this. He's making fun of him and he's wearing a $70 Armani shirt. So wait a minute. Not only is he wrong making fun of him, food makes you healthier. A $70 shirt and a $17 shirt still cover your body. So wait a minute. The bully is picking on someone who's doing the right thing and he's doing a wrong thing. Here's where you turn on the switch. When someone makes fun of you, and they say, man, you're such a dork, man, you drink organic, man, you pray five times a day, and you start this, no but, what are you doing? You're rationalizing, you're defending yourself. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Aren't you doing the right thing? Why do you need to defend? As soon as you tell the bully, look, dude, uh, I drink organic because I have a stomach disease, I have some swelling in my, oh, you're such a dork, man, and they keep going on. So why don't step out of the box when someone calls you some name? You're like, wow, you're a real you're a piece of art, man, right? Piece of art, art, right? I'm doing the right thing and you're doing the wrong thing and you're in power over me? Sorry, son. Go do whatever you want because I never needed your acceptance. I didn't need Vogue to tell me that my hijab looks nice or not. I didn't need a culture to tell me when I looked right or not. Because I looked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I said, Allah, is this pleasing to you? And that's, I believe, my time. And as I complete, I was looking through my closet. One of my closest students, Ubaidullah, is here, studied with me for years. And everyone can tell, Brother Islam usually wears thobes. And I was going through my closet and I asked my nieces and nephews to pull out something to wear. I said, Mom was going to speak in front of a lot of people. Can you pick out something nice? So they picked out a really nice thobe. And then I realized something. How can I get up here, be completely conscious about how I look? And then talk about, oh, you guys shouldn't worry. So I pulled out a kurta A that I never wear. B, this is from when my brother-in-law got married. I wore this to his wedding. How long have you guys been married? Long time. So that's why it's a little short. But I never looked. Now, press the pause button. Oh, oh. Press pause on the button.
and come back. Come back to the fact that when you're doing something right, Allah is okay with you. And when the status quo tells you otherwise, it's tough. Because I, I, I glanced through your sitcoms and your sitcoms are all about how you look. So all you can do friends is take the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and try to bring it in the fact that the people who are doing wrong and acting wrong and dressing wrong are the people who are looking down on us. So at the end of the day, when someone is able to pick on you, then you've bought his sale, then you're defending yourself. But you're already eating organic. Because what we eat for our soul comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nothing more organic than that. So I close and I ask you to kind of take a small message. We don't need a booth to spit the truth. We never needed anyone to tell us what was right or wrong. Let the haters hate. And all we need to do is start to appreciate. All of us need to live somewhere between sipping our fate and when the times get tough, then stand up in a sof. And when this culture tells you to stick your head in the ground and they want you to ostrate, turn to Allah and prostrate. Because every single status quo, every X and O, every gang sign can be turned into one. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. The message is clear. Being picked on is because we do not really look to that which is so clear. I end on one last point which I wish I could have made. You can't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't know what is status quo. You can't have acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't know what He accepts. Four ayahs before this, four ayahs after this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says four times in one surah, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّمْنَا الْقُرْآنِ And certainly, definitely, we made the Qur'an easy to remember. So who's going to remember and know what the status quo is? Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.